Lowdown Podcast, we've got Lorenzo Pruitt here. He is the manager of the Gold's Gym that I'm working out at all the time. He does an amazing job. They have great staff, great team there. Um, he's done a lot of CrossFit in his life. He is also a carnivore diet coach. So we're going to dive into that. Um, Lorenzo, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How'd your, uh, how'd your fitness journey start, man? Um, well, it started with my mom. My mom was an amateur uh, bodybuilder. And actually, when I was a kid, we were actually at Gold's in uh, Colleen, Texas all the time. I spent all my time in the kids club there and uh, my mom would be there <laughs> three hours at a time. And uh, we got really well acquainted with a lot of the kids there. Um, and so um, as I got older, I started, um, so back in the, in the 90s, they had, uh, especially on ESPN, they had all like the uh, bodybuilding shows with Tiana Tom. Uh, they had, um, there's this, on, <laughs> what was it? Uh, was Keanu Tom, and then there was this other one with uh, Lee Lee Priestley. He had his own little show on ESPN. I used to watch that all the time. I had these Lee Priestley had his own show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. In the nineties, yeah. So I used to watch that. Uh, I was I would steal my mom's dumbbells, and I would try to lift weights with it, and you know I would try to find anything exercise. We didn't have the internet wasn't as like big. So when I was twelve years old, I was trying to get as strong as possible. I would I would find anything. And uh, the Flex Appeal, that was called Flex Appeal with Keanu Tom. Just watch that every morning at 6 a.m. and just watch the workouts. And um, she would have all these like big bodybuilder guys. And, um, so just being able to learn from that. And then in high school, um, I had a, um, I had, a, uh, I started playing football. I played football because I was only interested in getting big because football players were big. And that's what was my main focus was trying to get as big as possible. So I played football, I had no interest in playing football, but that's what I thought you needed to do <laughs> to get bigger. Um, and then I actually switched high schools after my sophomore year. And then I had the privilege of working with this guy named Mike Bergner. Um, he owns, uh, he owns what's called uh, Burger Barbo in um, San Diego. So, um, and it's, and it's kind of interesting. We, um, he was an Olympic lifting coach. So mm -hmm. his, uh, his son, uh, was in the Olympics for 2000, for 2004 and 2008 on Olympic lifts, um, for, uh, for clean jerk. So it was his daughter-in-law and I got to work with this guy for three years in high school. Um, and, uh, it, it was cool because, um, that was actually when I got introduced to also to CrossFit. Um, so CrossFit started in 2000. Um, it was still kind of low key in California. Yeah. Um, and then my coach, he was implementing a little bit of CrossFit with, with Olympic lifting. So we do Olympic lifting two days a week or three days a week. And then we would have like our Friday would be like our CrossFit day. So we would do like a Linda on Friday. So it was actually, it was actually really balanced. Actually, that's probably how the CrossFit should be really done. To be honest with you <laughs> like that, but, um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, so it was, it was really cool. Um, and coach with, with between my mom and, uh, coach Bergner, um, they always told me you need to do some type of leg work. Um, so I'm a big advocate. I do legs like all the time. That's like my favorite thing to do legs and back, um, because of my Olympic lifting background. Yeah. You, you and me both, man. That's yeah. Like, that's our, that's, that's <laughs> like my favorite body part too. Oh, I mean, uh, coach, coach Bergner, he would not, he would not let you do any bench press. Um, like none, you would have to do it on your lunch. Like <laughs> the only time you could do it was lunch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, and then, well, sorry, cut you off. Like, yeah. you, like when you talk about bench press, it's like, where does bench press function in our everyday, but like, when do you ever need to push something heavy off of your chest? Like you need to pick up heavy stuff off the floor all the time. Right. right. So yeah. Deadlifts, squats. I mean, these are all very practical, but unless you're in a crowd of people and you want to throw somebody off of you, it's right. basically the only application for a bench press. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even to a certain extent, well, I'm kind of figuring out too, like even like doing like bat squats, I don't necessarily, like even with my clients, I don't do a lot of bat squats because even when you think about when you're carrying the heavy stuff, you're never going to hold things on your back. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're thinking more functionally, like a front squat would actually probably be more, more beneficial because you do find yourself sometimes in this kind of front rack yeah position if you you know um, that's, that, that's a very good point that you bring that up too because if you think about it i don't know if if you've experienced this but i feel a lot more 
comfortable as front squats like it feels more ergonomic mm -hmm. like if i'm gonna do back squats like i i can't i i can't do it barefoot or, or with even normal shoes on i have to have my heels elevated yeah Otherwise, I, I literally just can't go all the way down. I'll tip over. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And, I, and and like and then I guess with bass squats, they have their place. As um, like in my opinion, they have their place. And if you're trying to put on a bunch of mass and you do some really light, if you do some lightweight, high volume sets of twenty, get your legs really big, really fast. Like I see the value in that. Um, but if you're trying to get strong and then trying to be functional, like a, unless you're a power lifter, it doesn't really make sense. Well, in my opinion, it does make really sense to get to do a lot of back squatting. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, yeah. So, uh, and then Coach Burner actually was a huge, uh, he actually helped me get my first job as a trainer when I was 17 years old. Okay. Um, so this was, uh, I worked with this company called Fitness Together and I worked with them. Uh, I started out as an intern for them and and then um and then it's been pretty much history after that and um like right now i'm working for gold but with the intent of just being an owner of a gold gym not necessarily to work there forever yeah so, you, you and me both man yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pro probably probably not a gold so we're gonna um stick with the with the skull theme so that's that's a, that's a word we're on you know yes yeah. but um cool man so uh when did the carnivore diet take off as far as as far as how you live and how you train oh uh good question i first started off with the ketogenic diet um i kind of stumbled on it um with my with my wife um after she had our our second child and what basically she wanted to do something that she could feel like she could be consistent with and i was studying on the ketogenic diet um, being a trainer, I, I this is like 2015. Um, I was hearing a lot of good things about it, and my wife, she loves mayonnaise, so I was like, okay, well maybe she'll get to eat as much mayonnaise as she wants, like not really knowing, not really knowing anything. Yeah. Um, so sorry, this is pre-fitness. When, when I went to Europe for the first time, I discovered mayonnaise on French fries. And oh, <laughs> like for the next like 10 years after that, I was it was just like mayonnaise on everything. I was like, this is actually really good. It has to be good mayonnaise. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. My wife's the same way. She's super picky <laughs> about her mayonnaise. Um, we, we make our own. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, how does how does that work? I don't make it. My wife does. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you can ask her next time. She's of, of course she does. Yeah. <laughs> I make the steaks. Yeah. That's what I do. I make the steaks. I make a good uh, gin and tonic, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's good. Um, make but, a good protein shake. Sorry. Right. I'll, <laughs> let you, I'll let you go. No, no. You're good. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, I started. I, so, I did it with my wife to support her. Um, and then all of a sudden, a lot of things, um, things that I struggled with my whole life. Um, I, I struggled with a lot with my memory. Um, I struggled with a lot, which is fatigue and, and just not, um, before kids, like you, before kids, I would nap all the time. Um, I would be tired for no reason. You know, I just didn't understand. Um, and so I, I, I started feeling all this energy and then I went to go to the doctor, had my brain scanned. Turns out I was showing signs, early signs of Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, and so um, I'm like, oh, so basically, in, in essence, if I hadn't have done this diet with my wife, I probably would be, probably by the time I'm 40, I'm probably 40, 45. Because my grandfather died of Alzheimer's in his 50. So, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it could have been, it could have been really bad. Um, so I started doing a ketogenic diet and it was great. Um, I was doing it mainly for the benefits of just being able to focus and be able to, you know, um, do, um, be able to come home and be able to help my wife. And that's, that was the whole intent. Um, cause I, I didn't really care about aesthetics, you know, um, that much cause I could eat whatever I want and I could eat a whole bunch of junk food and still be ripped. So I can't stand people. <laughs> you, so, you know, so that, that, so it was more of an issue. It was more about my brain function. Um, more than anything. So, um, and then, but, um, but when it came to the gym, my performance dropped. And so like my first, I think it was like my first year on keto, I was just like, man, I just don't feel strong. That recovery was, was harder. Um, and then I came across, um, uh, Stan Efferding, you know who Stan Efferding is? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 So he did, he did like a seminar 
um, that you can find it on YouTube. He did, he did a seminar on um, the vertical diet and I was like looking at it and he kept talking about red meat and he kept saying, hey, you not only can you live on red meat, you can thrive on it. I'm like, oh. Um, and then I found Dr. Sean Baker, uh, and then I found Dr. Saladino and, and, and then it just kind of that rabbit hole of just like studying it out and like, oh snap. All the big carnivores. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and this was like 2000, so this is like 2016 before it actually, cause really didn't really, like even keto carnivore didn't really become a big thing to like. Yeah, I'm going to keep a savage too, Robert Sykes. Yeah. A lot of good carnivores on his, on his show and uh, one of his last episodes he was saying that, uh, his, his guest was saying that Flex Wheeler yeah. had a predominantly meat-based diet and, and actually rarely ate carbs. And obviously there's been, um, some, you know, supplements that most people that, 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 we, that we don't take that, <laughs> that they were included there. Yeah. Um, but still having a, uh, have, having a meat-based diet like that, um, is it's, yeah, you can, you can thrive on it to your point. Right. Um, and then the other book, other uh, person that really inspired me, you know, uh, Vince Gironda is. Yeah. Vince Gironda, his steak. What? Egg. Don't tell me he was a carnivore too. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. His steak, egg, and his steak and eggs diet. Look at, look at that. Um, yeah. Absolute 100% carnivore. Um, wow. Yeah. And so, um, so, so I, I studied, I studied that out and that's literally what he had Arnold on. That's what he had. I mean, that's what the diet that he had most of his as athletes that he was training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was just kind of like, oh, this is a no brainer. Okay. So I get to get the mental benefits of, uh, for my Alzheimer's and then I get the, the aesthetic and strength benefits from, from the meat. So I'm yeah. like, okay, this is perfect. So have you, have you read Paul Stavok Saladino's book? Yes. Uh, the carnivore, the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Sean Baker's book. Uh, I know, um, what is but but it's, I, it's just called the carnivore diet yeah and, yeah yeah and, and he talk, he talks about alzheimer's quite a bit in there i just kind of breeze through it because i'm like right, it doesn't apply to me it doesn't apply to me but um here but hearing your testimony is um wow that's that's pretty impactful yeah yeah and, um yeah and, and it's and honestly i try not to because it's hard because um it's a hard balance because i'm because uh, for me it is it is a lifestyle um and, it, and it's going to be my lifestyle the rest of my life yeah just because of all my cognitive issues um um so i guess when you're when i talk to people about it i talk to them with the intent of this is how you can make your life better not necessarily this is how you can get results faster um, yeah. So even at goals, like I don't, I, you know, um, unless someone asks me, asks me specifically, like what I do, I don't necessarily tell them. I try to get them to eat whole foods. Um, just because like they'll look at you, you probably get the same looks. Oh, all you do is eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, people, people think you're joking. Like they don't even think you're serious. Right. <laughs> one, one of the employees at your gym, actually, <laughs> I was, they're like, oh, did, did, like, you, you want, you want a protein shake? And I was like, oh, I'm actually only eating meat right now. <laughs> I was like. No, I'm actually serious. Like they're like, what? You're not eating vegetables? And I'm like, no. I'm like, you're, you're kidding me. Like just people, uh, that it's, it's it's just a foreign concept to a lot of people, yeah. and it really goes against what a lot of doctors say, what a lot of uh, a lot of the health and you know leading experts say. It just goes against conventional wisdom. Yeah, I mean, even in even in like uh, not to get like super into the race or anything, but to even in, in among African Americans it's um it is it's like oh you're gonna die of heart disease right but actually if you actually look at um why people's diet it, they're it's not necessarily great we have you know um you've actually looked at the roots we did a lot of hunting like we're, we're indigenous my wife's hawaiian she she comes from a very indigenous background they a uh, long time ago, all they ate was basically pig and fish. Yeah. And then, um, and taro root, which they grew themselves. And you look like the Inuits too. Right. And yeah, exactly. So, so even for me, I was, I kind of saw it as being of someone who's of indigenous de uh, descent. It just made sense for me to do carnivore anyway for a long time. You know, even my kids, we try to get them eating as much pork and fish as possible because they yeah. are Hawaiian. Uh, and they and honestly they do they thrive super well on it we have we have we have a 
big thing that Cole would pick every every week. Oh no way! Yeah, my wife makes a big thing. It takes oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's her favorite thing, and she'll she'll destroy that. She'll probably. <laughs> so it's like a real specific way to make Kahlua pig, right? Like mm-hmm. it's a it's a uh, pretty like it's a it's a simple recipe, but the process of cooking it, from what I understand, is pretty involved. Um, it depends. Uh, you can do it from um, my wife. What she calls it. I'm she gonna be mad if I messes up. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, you can dig a hole, like you can dig a hole, and then you can you can cook it that yeah. way. Um, yeah, because because we have a book with the recipe right there, and, and and it looked good, and I was like, oh hell no, I'm not doing all this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks too involved. <laughs> <laughs> but what actually was so, but well, now that we moved here, um, now that we moved here, um, we lived in Hawaii for about ten years. So um, we, since we moved here, she does basically in a she's slow cook in an oven, and she just put with smoke get the same result yeah um you know it, um because i was like why did we do it do it the other way she was like oh it's just tradition you know but it's just yeah 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 just for the cultural of it i guess right yeah awesome we'll have to have both of our wives here on the show in, in a couple <laughs> months and then just have all four of us talk about all our recipes and everything oh yeah that. no my wife she's amazing she um especially when i started doing this diet um she'll make me like um, keto desserts and stuff because you know she still hasn't stopped even though i have my stuff have you had one of robert's uh keto bricks yes i had one of his keto bricks yeah yeah, yeah. God, those things are good <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like addicted to those yeah it's like the only meal places that i have are those those keto bricks man oh wow yeah those yeah they're pretty good there's uh i like the one it has like a mocha one that's my favorite flavor yeah mocha yeah. cream yeah the mocha cream yeah, yeah that was super good yeah, yeah, I just had the toasted coconut almond too. That's a damn good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. My wife, she and then she'll make me. She'll just thinking about me. She'll make like keto desserts for me all the time, uh, especially on Christmas time because the house just smells like cookies. And you know, uh, I think I think this next year, I think she's gonna because she's finally deciding to try to get on the bandwagon. And, um, she's not gonna go completely carnivore. I think she's gonna do more like a whole thirty, where she wants yeah. to still eat vegetables. So. Yeah. And I have some vegetables here and there. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Usually it just it gives me gas. I'm like, why did I eat that? Right. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just go straight steak for a week. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah. So she makes a ton. So she does a really good job making that. Um, and honestly, it's it's super crazy because anybody, um, just even thinking about it, just in general, people are so lucky because uh, when I first started, my just keto or carnivore um there is not that many options as far as just like being able to be normal in a sense um to go out to eat in restaurants. yeah yeah go out to eat in restaurants and even be able to go to a restaurant and they know oh okay yeah i know what you're doing okay i'll just you know i'll make sure they take that out like it's yeah. I mean, I used to look so pretentious, like, like what? <laughs> yeah. I, was at a, I was at a restaurant when I was first on the carnivore diet, and, and I was like, and, and I was like, okay, I, I literally just want two burger patties, and they're like, you, you don't, you don't want a bun? I was like, no. You don't want fries? No. You don't want a side salad? No. And then like they had to come back like three times. They're like, okay, this is literally all you want. I was like, yes, <laughs> just, just the meat, just the meat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Um, I know. Actually, yeah, we just went. You just we we had stopped by Wendy's and I got my my um, my patties with my bacon and my Worcester cheese. And yeah, I go there if I if I don't have a lot of time to make food. And you know, it's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got Chick Fil A right next to the gym too. We got yeah, we got everything right there. Yeah. So for except for Sundays. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> except for Sundays. Yeah. I know. If I wonder people look at each other like I'm feeling Chick Fil A. Like, oh, Sunday. <laughs> Isn't it important though to be um, on the same page and unified with your wife if you if you have the same approach to your nutrition? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think um, it, and it, not and being unified doesn't necessarily mean you agree though. I think I think just having an understanding um, like, or at least similar habits because like yeah. our because like our fridge like we don't have carbs in our fridge just because. We don't, we don't need them. You know, our kids do just fine without, without yeah. carbs. Oh, and our, our, our son, he has a speech delay. And, and oh. so he's, um, we, we've, we've seen improvements ever since we went as far as to, you know, not like completely cut carbs out of his diet. Like, you know, he has some fruit here and there and like, we, we don't really eat it, but you know, it's, it's a treat for him to have strawberries or uh, bananas from time to time. But um, since we 
put them on more of a meat-based diet, um, particularly fatty meats, as, yeah. much, as, as much fatty meats as we can get them on bacon. Yeah. He loves bacon, he loves saying bacon. How can you not like bacon? So um, we've seen we've seen that to, um, to help that out a bit. Yeah, yeah and I, because my wife, she's still not, like I said, she's still not a completely, she respects my, she respects what I have, I have to do, especially just for me medically. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she still has a hard time just kind of getting, um, getting everyone. Um, it's actually kind of funny. My two-year-old, um, cause one of my, one of my favorite things is, uh, I like the, the fatty Greek yogurt, the Faye, um, fatty Greek yogurt. It's like my favorite. Uh, I think that's what we get to. We, we get a keto Greek yogurt. Your performance took a dive in the gym mm-hmm. when you, when you went keto and when you eliminated carbs. Um, how did it get better and how did you learn how to, and how, how did you train your body to adjust to having protein and fat as your primary fuel source? Right. Um, well, I, I definitely, uh, what started with electrolytes, um, just because when you, um, when you, you're not no longer taking in carbs, your body's not holding on to electrolytes. Yeah. And at that time I was, I was competing, um, I was competing pretty competitively in, um, not like not nationally or anything, but just local local uh, CrossFit competitions in the area. Um, and so with CrossFit, you're training you're training like four hours a day because you have you have all these different skills that you need to work on. You have know, yeah. lifting, you have um, you have conditioning, you have running, you have rowing, you have um, gymnastics, and so you're doing that for, for um, you know four hours a day. Um, and so, um, I was just noticing it was just, it, it was just getting harder and harder to recover and come back, coming back to another, I, I remember like, uh, just my body just after a workout, just completely cramping up and I was on the middle of the floor by myself. Yeah. Um, and my wife wasn't home. My phone was you can't, you can't 10 feet walk. It was 10, no, oh, that's <laughs> my phone was 10 feet away. I was like, oh God. <laughs> ah. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> um, you know, and then I and then I realized like, oh, I don't, I'm not, and then I started learning about electrolytes and how that works, and um, then realized, okay, I need to make sure I I put salt, I make sure I have more than enough salt on everything, uh, yeah, especially for the type of training I was doing, and the and the more the better, basically, just as much as you can palletize, right, exactly, and 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 it was funny too because I because Stan Efforting he talks about that, um, but I don't know why I forgot about it. It's like, oh yeah, he did say have as much salt as possible. So, um, so salt, um, I do magnesium, potassium, um, I supplement with some, uh, potassium, but I do, so have I you, do that. Have you ever, sorry, have you ever no. heard of uh, Celtic sea salt? No. Oh dude, this stuff. Yeah. Celtic sea salt has about twice as much potassium as it does sodium. Oh, okay. So I just load up my water in that with, with, with that. And I just drink a gallon of water every day. Well, I drink like three, because this, this is my workout supplements, has like all my creatine and stuff in it, my nice. non stimulant like pump formula and stuff. But then I have one that looks just like this with a whole bunch of Velcros on it because you never have enough Velcro patches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that has my, uh, has, has a gallon of water, um, filtered water, and a big, a big teaspoon, which is pretty salty, big teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. And it has magnesium in it too. And I supplement magnesium um, and, and a lemon in it too. So it tastes great. But like anybody, it's funny. Like if, if like my dad's around or if, or if like my wife's around and somebody wants to drink water, I'm like, hey, can I have a drink of water? Like, yeah, sure. And like, I, I forget that, you know, I'm just oh. so used to it. And then they drink like, what the heck? <laughs> I've done that to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's really but yeah, um, natural grocers. Okay. Yo. Okay. Natural Grocers has it. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. It's called Celtic Sea Salt. Okay. It's, Blue, it's hard to find other than that, though. Yeah. 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 They have they have it in fine or in coarse, and so I like to get the coarse. Well, we use the fine stuff to put like in my water and whatever because it dissolves easier. Yeah. But the coarse stuff is like, you know, it's like bigger chunks of of salt. Um, so I like to brine my steak in those. I take the steak and basically cover it in those and then I tenderize it because I like my steak to nice and tender. Yeah. So I basically pound them all out and I pound the all those um, chunks of salt into the meat. So it gets the salt like inside of it. Mm-hmm. Never heard of anybody else. I'm kind of proud of myself actually. <laughs> it's like a round thing. And 
then searing the steaks in in bone marrow. So we do bo we do bone broth. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And so when you roast the bones, all that marrow um, co collects. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you make your own bone broth? Have you done this before? I've made I've made it. I haven't done it lately because of four kids, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you roast the knuckle bones or whatever bones you have, there's all that marrow that drips down on your on your baking sheet. Yeah. So I just take that and put it into. Um, cup or like a little bowl and stick that in the fridge and then every time that we make steak um, which is every night for me <laughs> I just take a big spoonful of it and I just like use that basically as butter oh nice okay and so it's literally just yeah flank steak and we have to have you over some time and then I'll, I'll make this for you oh so, yeah um, it's so we just sear it, sear it on each side keep it nice and blue rare in the middle and that's pretty much how I do it the only downside is it's saturated fat Right, mm -hmm. because it's solid room temperature. Right. So the only thing that is annoying is it splatters everywhere, just like you're cooking with coconut oil or like mm -hmm. or like with bacon. Yeah. And it just gets over everything. So basically, every night, I have to do it before I go to bed because if I do it, it I, you can't wait till the morning because it's like impossible to scrape off of the um, off off of the countertop and off of the stove if you leave it for the morning before. So even though I'm tired, I do it because I love my wife and I don't want her to have to do it because she always gets up before I do and I always stay up later than she does. So I take our um, kitchen cleaner and just spray it all over the, um, the the stove and wipe it off before I go to bed. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. If you can deal with that, it's like the best way that I've ever made steak. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So do you, uh, do you have more of a high fat approach or more of a high protein approach? That's um, a big argument for a lot of people in the carnivore world. <laughs> yeah, um, well, because of my case with with um, with my Alzheimer's, I, it's more of I, it is more high fat. Um, I am experimenting with um, with uh, ketones with uh, exogenous ketones right now. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I've, just, I've never done that, but I've heard of that. Yeah, um, and mainly because um, I've been I've been eating the way I've been eating so long, um, like the last maybe like the last four or five with this, especially with this fourth kid, like I've been a little bit more tired lately. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if I became so fat adapted that I'm not as producing as much ketones as I was before. Yeah, and me being uh, like I don't I don't believe in chasing ketones. Like if you're trying to you know if you're trying to change your body, like I don't believe in that. Yeah. Um, but in my case, the ketones helps me with my brain function. Um, so, um, I started supplementing with, um, actually about a month ago, um, I started supplementing with ketones about wow. a month ago. So, um, and it's been, it's been good. I, like, I feel like how I felt before just mentally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it was weird because I kept telling my, my wife kept asking me, are you eating carbs? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I just, I don't know why I'm so tired. And I think it was just like it was something about it was something I just wasn't producing as much ketones or I needed more because I'm getting, I'm in my my mid thirties now, so I don't know. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ketones are a very, very powerful source of brain fuel. Mm -hmm. They're great fuel for your whole body, but specifically for your brain, right? From what I've heard, and I've noticed that too. Especially when I first did the keto diet, like I do, I do stand up comedy, and so I'd be at comedy clubs, and, like having jokes come out that like they're just off the cuff that I wouldn't wasn't able to do like back when I was eating carbs and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the, the keto diet's great, and I love it, but for, for me personally, I can only really get into ketosis if I'm in quite a bit of a deficit, mm. a calorie deficit. So I can't even have a whole lot of fat because even that'll kick me out of ketosis. If you have too much fat, then your body's like, well, I don't need to burn any fat and, and, and I'm getting into ketosis because they have so much dietary fat. Yeah. Um, but for just for all around, just like feeling good every day, performance in the gym, um, basically just being who I am, a person I've found the um, high protein approach to be to be great because then I can just over consume protein and just eat like way more protein than my body needs. So I'm like, I'll have like 400, 450 grams of protein a day mm -hmm. pretty pretty often. And all that extra, um, you know, this the gluconeogenesis, all that extra protein just um, gets converted to carbs. So like I feel like I'm eating a lot of carbs, mm -hmm. but I can get away with eating a lot, a lot more fat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, if I promise you, like, I know the law of ther thermodynamics works. I'm not like trying to argue against the law of thermodynamics, but I'm telling you, 2,500 calories a day 
400 grams of protein, 100 grams of fat, zero grams of carbs. I can do that. I can build muscle and I can stay lean. Yeah. If I change it to 200 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, and 100 grams of fat, which is still 2,500 calories, yeah. I promise you I will get fat. Yeah. Promise you that I will get fat. <laughs> I'm not like you where I can eat pizza and still be ripped all the time. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've been I've been doing keto for so long, or keto carnivore ish uh, for so long that it's I, I probably I don't know what would happen. <laughs> Am I trying to cheat? <laughs> Let's not find out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I mean, even with even with uh, when the, my wife's last pregnancy, I was eating a lot of those like. Um, like the quest, the quest snacks and stuff like that, because I was having cravings like my wife. Yeah, I was giving, uh, I was giving me gas, dude. My, yeah, yeah. My, my stomach's like, was, 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 it, was that food? Was that like what? Is, like is that plastic? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, I did gain some daddy weight from from just eating all those like those those fun little keto, keto yeah. snacks, you know. Um, one, one gram of net carbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twenty five grams total carbs. Like, how's that possible? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so I did, I did, I did, you know, um, when my wife was right in, I, you know, that was sub, that sympathy weight or whatever, but I mean, yeah. for, for the most part though, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, it's one of those things that, yeah, you, you just have to, um, um, decide essentially what works for you, you know, um, it doesn't, um, I, when it comes to, for me, in my opinion, when it comes to nutrition, I think you just have to figure out what exactly works. Um, I try not to go, and then again, just working with so many clients. I've had, I've put clients on carnivore before, and I've seen them do really, really well, and I've seen them do terribly, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, um, so you have to be like kind of um, mindful of whoever that person is. And, and you got to talk to them every day yeah, too, make, right. sure, make sure they're doing okay. Cause yeah, I had one of my clients on. Um, I had used just the, the bro diet, chicken and rice and everything. And then I, um, I, I, was, I was like, he, he was like, Hey, I want you to write me a meal plan. And I was like, well, I mean, I, I, it'd be hard for me to write a meal plan that has carbs. And I was like, how do you feel about doing the keto diet or a carnivore diet? And I explained to him and then he was like, well, you pretty much sold me on it. So yeah, I'm down to try it. And then like two weeks later, he was like, man, like I've been binge eating this and binge eating that and I'm having cra cravings for cookies and stuff that, like I've never had before and, yeah. and, and I was like oh man like what have I done and then uh two weeks later he got it together and got on track with it and now he's got body recomposition going and he's he's leaner he's fitting into jeans that he's never fit into before and his gym improvement is just going through the roof and it took an adjustment with you know with a rocky start and I think a lot of people kind of go through that but the, yeah for first couple of weeks cutting out carbs whether it's carnivore, whether it's keto, uh, it's rough. Yeah. yeah. It takes some, it takes some time to adjust to it. So actually one of my clients, uh, she actually, one of my clients, I can't remember, she did, she was doing red meat. I had, um, and I tried to, so with women, especially like, man, women, they could benefit so much from eating red meat. It's like ridiculous. Um, but, uh, one of my clients, she had a super hard time. So what she did was she actually <laughs> just did like bacon. So she was, cause I, I put her on, um, I just, I try to keep, for me, I try to keep things as simple as possible cause that's just how I think. Um, so I was telling her to have a pound of red meat every single, every single day, a pound of red meat, split it up the other day. So instead of doing that, she decided to get the cleanest bacon she could find and just do a pound of that. Yeah. Um, and so it made her transition good. It made her transition so much easier because it didn't feel like as much food. Um, even though. Because I guess the I guess the, the density and the viscosity of the, of the bacon just made mm -hmm. it easier for her to eat, and then she was able to make that transition to red meat. So it was kind of it was kind of interesting. Yeah, well, and bacon's great for keto too because it actually has the perfect protein to fat ratio. Yeah, for keto, it's not too high on protein. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got a, I got a client that's um, uh, a Muslim actually, and so he he doesn't eat uh, pork or anything, and I'm like. Boy, oh boy, how are we gonna make a carn make make a keto carnivore diet work <laughs> like, yeah. without any without any pork? And so he's basically just doing the same thing as me. He's just he's, he's just doing uh, steak, a whole mm. bunch of steak, yeah. just thriving off of it. The steak has plenty of fat too. So yeah, so basically the this I have no idea how accurate this is. I'm probably way off, but my because 
tracking calories on a carnivore diet is tough, man. Yeah, like it's super tough. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, you have no idea how much fat and how much protein is in that. Uh, it's really, really hard to tell. So I'm generalizing here, but in general, if you eat nothing but if you eat nothing but lean steak, um, my best my best guess from the research that I've done has been that you're at about a one gram to four gram ratio mm -hmm. from fat to um, from fat to protein. So if you're eating steak, like you don't you don't need to eat a whole bunch of egg yolks and a whole bunch of cheese and a whole bunch of like um, bacon and like real fatty food to get your fats in. Like there's there's plenty of fat, set good saturated fat that's built into that into that steak and the, and the saturated fat is man you, you're like you said your, your body just thrives on that mm -hmm. like i don't know how it got demonized and why um people think it's the devil um if you're you know i got i got, I got friends that are like oh, i just i just don't i don't I'm, i don't do good on red meat and i told them i was like okay do you not do well with red meat or like what when do you usually eat red meat well at restaurants okay next time you go to a restaurant and you want red meat just get that and like maybe some vegetables if you want but don't eat the bread with it don't eat a, don't get a bun with your burger and right. don't have a soda and then tell me how you feel he's like bro it actually, I, I feel great i'm like see it, it wasn't that it was it was the french fries it right. was it was it was, exactly. all, it was everything else <laughs> it was everything else with it you know and like bacon too it's like oh well bacon is co correlated with with with, uh, with with heart problems no bacon was correlated with heart problems because healthy people thought it was bad for them. So people that were health conscious and exercise weren't eating bacon and they weren't drinking coffee. Yes. You know, yeah. Have, causation and correlation. Have you, difference. have you looked at the, uh, cause again, I had to, I had to do a ton of research as I started doing this. Uh, and so I could defend myself, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, in the 1950s and sixties. So right before that, uh, the, the nutrition pyramid came out, which was like the 1970s. That was their staple of their diet was red meat, um, fish, um, that was like cod liver oil and, um, and heavy, uh, the, it was milk, but it was like, it was like milk from a cow with the, you know, it was raw milk. That was their diet. And it, and there was no evidence of diabetes back then. No, rarely any evidence of cancer back then versus now we have all these like we have a lot more fitness fads and all sorts of stuff, but obesity and disease is is higher than ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared to the 1950s, 1960s. Yeah, um, you know, so it's which doesn't which is like to me, if you look, if you actually really study it out, like the logical is, you know, there's there's something going on that we are not seeing, um, especially with the current like the the current standard of nutrition. You know, um, they finally just recently made on the pyramid, they finally just recently made the pyramid water as the base. Water was never a base <laughs> for the nutrition pyramid. Yeah. It was never a base. It was kind of a whole form somewhere. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's just kind of interesting just to see that, man, like, um, it, there, it, there's, I mean, there, there probably is some type of, probably has to do a lot with business, probably has to do a lot with government. It probably has to do a lot of those things. Um, and you know, people are just kind of drinking the Kool-Aid as, as, so to speak, they're literally drinking the Kool-Aid and not yeah. really seeing like, oh, like, oh, there's not it, but there's people in my life that's dying of this stuff. You know, I saw my grandmother, she was, um, she was 400 pounds when she died. I saw her die of diabetes and obesity, you know, and what they called, they said that she ate too much meat, but she wasn't eating a bunch of meat. She was eating, you know, she's eating all kinds of other stuff that she wasn't supposed to be eating. Yeah. Same thing with my grandfather who had Alzheimer's, like same thing. Uh, so it was, yeah, so it's kind of like, I don't, it's, it's hard because when you're doing something that's different from everyone else, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're just gonna turn people's heads. You're gonna rub people the wrong way. And that's just how it is. Yeah. You know? Some people are well-meaning and some people are critical. Yeah. <laughs> I found most people like genuinely are concerned. They're like you're going to die of a heart attack. And I'm like, I probably am because mm -hmm. heart attack is heart attacks are the number one killer of everybody. Even if you don't eat meat. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I know, I know, uh, with like, uh, Chadwick Boseman recently dying, I know like my family got a little bit more concerned about me. 
because um, he died such a, but I don't even know what his diet was, mm -hmm. um, you know, because um, colon cancer, colon cancer specifically is more prevalent in black men than any other, than any other race, um, which I get, um, but there's so much studies showing the benefits of eating a high fat diet as far as just a high fat diet, high, um, high fat, high protein diet. Um, as far as fighting cancer. So I'm like, well, I don't know why would, actually you should be less concerned about me, <laughs> if anything. Yeah. Um, you know, but, and, and, the, and the constant thing is, oh, well, you're eating so much meat, it's really bad for your colon. According to what, to what? Well, it's correlated. Okay, but it's not causal. Like it's, you don't know what this, and that's the other thing, yeah. that the difference between correlated and causal. We, we combine those definitions, like has nothing, no, it's not causal. It's correlated. Yeah, and and it, and it kills me that these medical professionals, um, who's supposed to who's supposed to be experts at reading the research, do not communicate that way. Yeah. And they're not in shape. <laughs> and they're not in shape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't get me started on that. My uh, my professor in, in college. I went to Cal State Fullerton for uh, kinesiology. I didn't finish, but um, um, he. Uh, he was uh, the head of the National Strength and Conditioning Association, the president. Yeah. I met this man. He's a tall man. He's about six, two, six, three. He's about 150 pounds. He, yeah. He's a, impossible. <laughs> he's, a re he's a researcher. Yeah. So the NSCA was built off of research. Now they've, they've changed it. It's, it's changed a lot. Like, um, even like their their head of the program is Andy Gill, but he's he's an Olympic lifter and he knows this, he knows this stuff super smart guy. But um, but just but even then, like you, you, he was a doctor. He was a doctor of kinesiology, but he 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 studied only movement, right? He only studied movement. He not just didn't lift. He had no understand how he didn't really understand how physiology worked um, as far as just how to get results, how to you know. Um, so. Doctors in general, like I think they're great for handling um, putting band-aids on things, yeah. but dealing with deeper, deeper stuff um, that can prolong our lives or give us a better quality of life. I think they should be more qualified to do that stuff, but they're not, and it's and it's has it's not necessarily their fault. Like I've met some really great doctors um, who who know their stuff. Um, but it's really, I mean, even for, to find a doctor for me that understands my diet, understands my nutrition, and, and who's comfortable with it, um, instead of giving me this like, oh, well, I don't know if you should be doing that, you know, or they'll, they'll see my blood pressure is low compared to most people, just because of my diet, my blood pressure is just lower, and you know, I, I'm not, I feel great. Yeah, my blood pressure is super low. Yeah, yeah, my blood pressure. Yeah, my, my heart rate is usually like. 45 15 resting, resting heart rate yeah yeah so <laughs> even my doctor was like you didn't have to you didn't have to come fasted i didn't fast <laughs> i was like i actually ate i ate like i ate like a whole pound of because uh, i like i like to eat the um 85 15 ground beef it's just fast for me to make yeah yeah um so um because i just all i do is i uh, use an air fryer and i still in the air fryer and then I get my, my four kids ready. Oh, yeah. You cook ground beef. And so you put it in the air fryer raw? Yeah, just put it in the air fryer. And yeah, it's, I don't recommend it for everybody, but I do it because it's, 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 it's just like a patty. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's wow. Patty. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it's <laughs> uh, like I was saying, it's more about a necessity. Um, and then I had, to, I had to tweak and mess with it to, um, so that I had some failed attempts. Like I, so this, this is a convenience recipe. So if we have any listeners that are like, "Hey, I tried that recipe and it wasn't very good," this disclaimer: this is not like for the purpose of tasting good. It's, right. This, this is for a, a, a busy professional with kids. Got it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't even remember to season it sometimes. So, <laughs> so oh I'm like, oh, oh, I'm, all right. I'm gonna do my next thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And then me and my wife are, and then uh, so I we run a business. We also are shepherds in our church, and that takes a lot of our time too. Is that like a deacon? Um, yeah, yeah. So our our main thing, we work with a lot of like uh, 
we were specifically with a lot of like single professionals. Um, so um, our singles, uh, our singles group, our singles Bible talk that we call it. And, um, so yeah, we work with a lot of singles professionals, um, just really helping them be more prepared for life. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if that's in their future, be prepared, be prepared for marriage. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they're you know, and, and have these have conversations like, hey, why aren't you being successful? God wants you to be. Um, as successful as possible, and it's kind of interesting. We we talk a lot about self esteem and feeling, you know, and because uh, a lot of them they're they're because they're in their thirties and forties and they're still single. They're they're not they're not as happy, um, uh, and they just they're not. Um, and so they try to look to the world to get um, to get other things that really they could get from God, but they just choose they choose not to or choose not to. Um, do it God's way. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's kind of what we try to do is help people see you can actually be satisfied in God doing it God's way um, and not um, not to need all those other things that, you know, the world promotes as good. Yeah. The, you know? b- the book of Job is a big <laughs> wake up call to that. Right. The, yeah. Y- 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 you, have, you have a guy that, that he's actually happiest and uh, the most fulfilled when he has everything taken away from him everything and he only had god's presence and um basically the moral of the book <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly yeah. So that's pretty cool that you guys teach that too yeah. cool brother um we gotta do this again yeah <laughs> i feel like we're only scratching the surface and it just it just got better and better the more that we talked about these things so uh appreciate your time so much thanks for thanks for being on the show and um, thanks for having me something won't be the last time <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, podcast. Thank you so much for joining us for this entire episode. If you found this entertaining or if you found it helpful, we ask if you would please share this and help spread the word to make sure that you don't miss future weekly episodes. We have a new episode every Saturday morning. You can subscribe to the podcast and it would mean the world to us if you would leave us a rating or a review on iTunes or whatever platform that you're listening on. And if you're listening to this audio, remember that you can watch the video on YouTube. We are not on Patreon or any other service for donations. This content is our gift to you. If you would like to support the show, we do invite you to our website, supersetyourlife.com, where you will find our retail pages for our very own Skull Bells workout equipment line, hats, t-shirts, coaching services, and my stand-up comedy booking information. On the website, you will also find the link to subscribe to our weekly newsletter to be informed of new product announcements, sales, and all information to be up to date on what is going on. Finally, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at supersetyourlife.com. Thanks again, and God bless. Also, the audio is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Overcast, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. Probably a couple other ones I don't even know about. Thanks a lot.